Shalom, shalom. This is Mr. Case, and this is 6.3a. 6.3a. We've been looking at the Roman Empire, and it's during the Roman Empire's existence that we have the rise of Christianity. Now, it's an important religion because it emphasizes a personal relationship with God. You don't see that in any other religion. You don't see it in Buddhism. With Buddha, you don't see it with Confucianism. You don't see it with Taoism. You certainly don't see it with Islam. There is no relationship with Allah. You just try try to please Allah. Here, there is a invitation to a personal relationship with God. Okay, now, as scary as it sounds, the first Christians were good Jewish boys. They were Jews. And about 63 BC, Jewish kings were allowed to rule Israel as Rome's representatives. They had to bow down to Rome, but they had some freedom to rule over their people. Jewish people who wanted to get rid of Roman rule were called zealots. If you're zealous, it means you're very hopped up, you're very passionate about something. Well, here, they were passionate about independence from Rome. So you'd see some people that would bump off Roman trade caravans, etc., etc. Another group is looking for the coming of Messiah. Now, Messiah was promised way back in the book of Genesis, and the Jewish people were looking for their Savior to free them, and they thought it was from political oppression. So they, um, they knew that through um, the Jewish people, the Messiah would come. He would be born a Jew. Jesus was born in Israel in the city of Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth, that's his hometown, but he was born in Bethlehem as his mom and dad had to make a pilgrimage to Bethlehem to pay taxes and to register for a census. It's there he was born, but he was raised in Nazareth up north in the Galilee area. He lived a pretty quiet life, but at age 30, as a carpenter, he steps out of the family business and he begins a public ministry. It only lasted for three years, but he preached in the Galilee down into Judea, into Jer uh, Jerusalem. He taught the people, he performed miracles, and he did good deeds. The people listened to him, and the people began to follow him. Now, for Christianity, you have ideas of monotheism, the belief in one God, Jehovah, or Yahweh. The Ten Commandments, yep, Christians believe in that. Personal relationship with God, the love for God, the love of friends and enemies, which is kind of a difficult thing to love your enemy, to love yourself. And if you follow the teachings of Jesus and if you accept him as Messiah and repent of your sins, heaven is your eternal reward. That's what the Christians believe. The story of Jesus' ministry was recorded in the Gospels, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. As Jesus ministered, he took to him 12 disciples. Now, he had hundreds of disciples, but 12 intimate disciples to be trained for the ministry. Later on, after Jesus is crucified, these disciples become apostles, which means called out ones. They are to spread the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Christ. So, a Christian believes that Jesus is Messiah. He is God in the flesh. He was man, but he was also God at the same time. And as the crowds follow him, the Jewish leaders begin to be jealous, and they hated and feared him. And since they could not put him to death, they conspired to have him trumped up on charges of treason, uh, he was going against Rome, supposedly, and he was eventually crucified. The term Christ, that's not his last name, it's a title. Jesus Christ. Jesus Messiah. Christos, that's Greek for Savior or Messiah. So the Jewish leaders who hated him would not call him Christ. They would say he is an imposter. When he was crucified, he was buried in a rich man's tomb, in a rock tomb, and three days later, he resurrected from the dead. He was raised from the dead. After this, he was seen by hundreds of people for the next 40 days, and then he ascends into heaven. He leaves the work of the gospel to the apostles, 
Peter was supposedly the first apostle, and the Roman Catholic tradition says he was the first pope. And he goes and preaches to other parts of the Roman Empire, in Syria, and as well as in Palestine. So the first believers are Jews. The first believers are Jews. Then the Gentiles are allowed to come in, and despite the fact that Rome is suspect of Christians, that they want to bump off Rome, the faith does start to spread. The next time we uh, finish up here, we're going to be talking about the Apostle Paul and the early church fathers. This is Mr. Kays, and this is 6.3a. I'm out.